to fulfil this role as chaplain this year. It's a, it's a role that I'm both privileged and delighted to fulfil over this time. Thank you very much. For those of you who would like to join me, let us pray. Almighty God, fount and source of all authority and wisdom, hear our prayers for those who govern. <coughs> Give to Elizabeth our Queen grace and wisdom as she symbolises the loyalty and unity for so many around the country. We pray that you give to the leaders across our nation and especially to those with local responsibility here across the world, wisdom and skill, imagination and energy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the responsibilities and privileges that come with leadership. And we thank you for the privilege of being here today and for our serving over the year to come. We pray for everyone, Heavenly Father, who is given the responsibility of making decisions, that they may serve those who have elected them in humility and grace, offering their gifts and talents with joy and a servant heart. May you bless this place and all who serve here. May all who serve do so justly and carefully, mindful of the different needs of those whom they serve. May your spirit be present, and may your grace and righteousness be reflected in all discussion. Give to everyone here vision, wisdom, understanding and integrity, that all may live and lead in peace, truth, and prosperity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and Crime Commissioner for Merseyside, and it surpassed all expectations. All the answers were given a booklet in the safety of workers. They were shown safety on trains, buses, bicycles, roads, safety, and don't walk away, and what numbers to ring in the emergencies. Um, I was so impressed, not on not what they were actually doing, but the way they were delivering it too. They actually worked it out how to uh, impart this information in a way that youngsters can understand. And it, it was really impressive to see this. I, I was so, so impressed. Uh, I want to thank Councillor John Salter, who has been highly uh, involved in organising this and, and um, being a part of the actual original session in the first place. I think it's a wonderful idea to have the schools along and to be doing this. Uh, I, I said so when I got all the services together afterwards and gave them an impromptu speech and, and said how wonderful I think this, these three days have got. I, I hope as a council that maybe we could look um, at do, helping or being involved in rolling this out to more schools and, and doing this at least annually if not a couple of times a year. That would be marvellous. So thank you so much. Uh, John, for, for all that that you've, you've done on that. Okay, I'm going to move on to petitions. Uh, I feel the agenda. Are there any petitions which councillors wish to present to the council in accordance with standard order 21? Talks about 
um, how the document is to be channeled into departmental operational plans, how the target of new house building is to be progressed, practical use of capital receipts, further details on new models. These are all part of the next stage of this process, which are detailed action plans around each of the pledges, uh, etc., in the document. So uh, I don't think it's appropriate to hold up the whole plan because it's, this is not about implementation, this is about the high level vision, ambitions um, and objectives of the council over the next five years. So we will, we will not be accepting uh, the amendment. So I, I'd just like to make a few points Mr. Burr, about the actual plan. Um, I do think it's appropriate that this policy council um, debates this plan and clearly following the, the overwhelming endorsement of, of the Labour Party by the people of Wirral in the last May elections. It's appropriate that the administration brings forward a long-term plan uh, for taking the council and this borough forward over the next five years. Mr Mayor, uh, I do believe the council has come a long way over the past three years. Uh, we inherited uh, £17 million overspend. We're on the verge of intervention by central government. But in March 2015, following a period of intense partnership working with the local government association via a, a joint improvement board. I'm really pleased to say that this council was recognised as the most improved council in the country uh, at the recent local government chronicles awards. And our improvement, Mr Mayor, has been hailed as the fastest turnaround of any council in the country and championed by the LGA as an example of best practice. And I believe now we need to move to become the best council in the country. I think that aspiration and ambition is absolutely right. Mr Mayor, as a progressive administration with values such as social justice at the heart of what we believe, I think the time is right to set out this long-term plan. Clearly, I believe our task has not been helped by the, um, the Tory government's cuts over the past five years, and whether I like it or not, I don't particularly like it, this government is probably going to be around for another five years and are committed to making more cuts in public spending which will make our job that much harder. However, I don't believe that we should use this uh, as an excuse for, for doing nothing and the plan sets out um, the uh, key priorities that we're setting out. It sets out that long-term vision to become a place where all of our residents and businesses thrive and it sets out a number of outcomes which represents what I believe is a contract with the people of the world. So, I do believe it's important for us to say that every child in the borough should get the best possible start in life. Our residents should be equipped with the skills to enable them to get the jobs in the future. We create the economic opportunities through attracting new businesses and investment into the borough. We treat everybody with respect and dignity in older age. We strive to uh, close that health inequalities gap which has been in existence for years. And we look after our environment for future generations to enjoy. The plan is divided into three priorities, people, business and the environment, and it sets out 20 pledges, each of which includes specific targets in areas such as housing, jobs, investment, education and reducing <coughs> poverty. So this will enable us, in a way that I don't believe that we've been able to in the past, to track progress over time and hold ourselves to account because there are those measurable targets embedded in the plan. But Mr Mayor, this plan is as much about introducing new ways of working as anything else. Over the next five years, we do need to look beyond organisational and geographical boundaries. This means achieving maximum impact, not just for the £200 million that this council will have to spend by 2020, but the £2 billion which the public sector as a whole will spend. We will need to embrace new models of service delivery. We've done some of that over the last few years. We need to do a lot more. And we need to work in partnership with other public bodies, with businesses, voluntary organisations, and across geographical boundaries, and with our neighbouring authorities. We will need to maximise the opportunities presented by devolution, which we discussed at the last council meeting. And we need to become even more outward facing and seek out and replicate good practice elsewhere. We need to be clear, I think we need to have a really honest conversation about what our core business is and what things we will have to stop doing or ask others to do for us. It's essential though, it's essential that we take our residents with us on this journey 
and ensure that we're consistently aware of what the priorities of our communities are. We need to use the talents of our communities to deliver more things, to help them to deliver more things themselves, rather than always relying on public agencies to do this. And I believe this will be helped by devolving more powers and funding to communities by our constituency committees. Mr Mayor, it needs to be said very clearly, our staff are absolutely critical to delivering this plan. And we need to ensure that they have the skills uh, and the wherewithal to help us to achieve our priorities. But finally, Mr Mayor, this plan is about the what. It's about what are our high-level ambitions and priorities for this borough over the next five years. As I said earlier on, more detailed action plans will follow which will set out the how, how these ambitions and priorities will be achieved and delivered. I believe, Mr Mayor, that this plan does present an exciting vision, which hopefully, I'm hoping the whole council can unite around. It includes ambitious but achievable targets and seeks to include all of our key stakeholders, our residents, our staff, partners, elected members, and so on. Mr Mayor, the plan sets out 20 pledges for 2020. It's our contract with the people. I believe it's a vision worth fighting for. It's a plan which enables us to build on our status as the most improved council. It's a plan which shows how local government can make a real difference to people's lives rather than leave everything to the market. On behalf of the Labour group, Mr Mayor, I'm proud to move this plan and it's now time to deliver. Thank you. Some adjustments to it, 
but as long as uh, various areas are protected, then local councils are particularly in the firing line. The leader asks us to unite around particular things, so it would help, I think, if I went through some of the things that we need more detail of. If I said on page 21 that we're going to make the planning processes simpler to encourage growth, then perhaps we need some flesh on those bones. Uh, do we, how do we make them simpler? And I know the government announced last week some idea about brownfield sites, and they have ideas for simplifying things, but unless there is an element of planning in those, we may end, may end up with inappropriate development. Davis, particularly in this section on page 28, gives us a target for 7,000 houses over the lifetime of the plan. That includes 3,500 buildings. But well, not long ago, the council looked at the local development framework. And I looked at housing land supply and I looked at what's been achieved in recent years. Uh, 300 or so social houses units being built. Uh, and the housing land supply in March 2014 would give us 1,933 units. I'm not counting rural waters in that because. Um, without wishing to ruin everyone's day or upset the apple cart, I haven't yet seen a detailed implementation plan that shows me when things will happen there. Especially the easiest case might be to develop the East Float and put the housing there. I haven't seen how that's going to be translated into practice. Again, with the Housing Association issue, the recent budget does seem to have an impact on rents in social housing and may actually make it difficult for social housing to be developed. So it would be useful to see how that works in practice. I know the leader wanted uh, unity on behalf of the council in this, and I said there were the difficult days when plans were thrown in and out and tossed around and argued over in detail. Um, I therefore want to talk about the, the budget in a little more detail, because in this year, we expect to receive the greatest <coughs> capital receipt that I've ever seen likely to arrive with this council. 25 years ago, the council sold the precinct in Birkenhead to help build the new swimming pool and uh, Conway Park. We have the likelihood of uh, a substantial receipt, which I can't disclose because the deal hasn't been completed, but it will be one of the largest sums I can ever recall coming into the council's coffers. And therefore, there's a question of how we use that plan, how we use that fund to improve our infrastructure, how we use it to remodel our services, and how we actually enable that to get sent out to the constituency committees, whether they'll get a share. Because I looked at the report on transport that's going to cabinet shortly, and I think apart from the schemes for step that members can read about, the remodeling of the area around the retail park and more cycle routes, each constituency committee is to get £30,000 for local schemes. And yet we will have this substantial receipt which we've used to do many things with when, when it's actually received. I also, Mr. Mayor, would point out that in the earmarked reserves, except excluding the school balances, there remains a remodeling fund which may be called upon as times progress because of staffing and financial problems. But the purpose in moving this amendment, Mr. Mayor, excuse me, was to flag up particular issues that we need detail on and which might be developed in the scrutiny process, but it is not a way of stopping the plan, it is looking for ways where it might succeed. Now, I, at the end of the comment I made, I referred to the plan that was then put forward by Councillor Fouts as leader. Can you just start winding up now? Yes, I call the driving lessons. Driving lessons. And as Councillor Facts in that said, there were many accidents you could have on the road, the crashing of gears, the stalling of the traffic lights and other things. That has always been the danger of all plans. Uh, my job is not to stall this plan, but to see it work in practice, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'm going to open the matter for debate. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone involved in the collaboration of producing the council plan. I think it's a fantastic plan. But as we, as already been mentioned, um, the problem with the plan.
plan is going to be the delivery of it. And to deliver that plan, it's going to need every single councillor in this chamber to put themselves in the best possible position to do that. And as, as has been mentioned in the plan, we are asking uh, people to take on skills, skills that they'll, they'll need for the future to be able to fill the employment gaps that we'll need in the will. We're going to be asking people and communities that are developing across the world, uh, different cultures and different people coming from different areas to develop our fantastic will offer. Because of that, we as councillors must put ourselves in the best position educationally and through training and take advantage of them training uh, opportunities that we have within the council to link in with our trade unions, with union learn and take advantage of training opportunities that exist through that. We have funding set aside, we still have funding set aside to take advantage of training opportunities for councillors to take this plan forward. And we really need, as councillors, to explore where these funding opportunities exist, but most of all, to take advantage of them through the training of members that already exist at the council. I would like, along with the Labour group, for them opportunities to be progressive and not reactive, to move forward as a progressive training facility where councillors take advantage of their opportunities available to them and, and congratulate other councillors who go out of their way to, to, to take advantage of training opportunities to be able to take this plan forward. Because believe me, it's going to be a really hard task to take the plan forward if we don't take advantage of training opportunities that exist. We actually owe it to the people that we represent to take these training opportunities and put ourselves as councillors, as individuals, to cut across the political divide, to put ourselves in the best possible position to take what I consider as a fantastic plan forward. And I believe if you don't do that and you react to councillors who are putting themselves in that opportunity, it says in the amendment there, you know, take advantage of skills that are offered throughout different sections, through the LGA, through the trade unions, and I agree with that. Look at the resources that are available and take advantage of them so as we can carry out this opportunity that we've got to help the people of the world. Thank you. 
country with the hugest deficit this council has ever seen since peacetime. Mr. Mayor, um, we would like to actually believe that Labour has changed, and this clearly is your 2020 vision. And 2020 vision clearly is perfect vision. Well, I do hope you have perfect vision because the people of the world are actually relying upon you for that. But as far as I'm concerned, and members of our group are concerned, probably the jury is still out on that. But there is to be much applauded within the plan, because clearly who would ever you know, argue about the fact that we have to protect our vulnerable and older people? How refreshing for our council to do that. We need to protect our children, attract business and tourism to the area. And as I think you mentioned somewhere in here, or in the preamble that went to Cabinet, there is mention of the uh, wonderful opportunity that we had as a borough for tourism when the three queens arrived here on the Mersey. I'm not totally convinced that we made the best use of that occasion, and I think Liverpool actually stole the show on that, perhaps for obvious reasons, but nevertheless, we did seem to be a bit of a poor relation, even though it was a fantastic event. And yes, creating economic growth, fantastic, closing the gap in health, in it I will, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, I won't go on too long. Uh, you even actually, one thing I do want to mention is you even um, talk about working across borders. I hope by that you mean uh, to embracing the devolution bill because we were really quite lukewarm on that last week. And just while we mention the devolution bill, can I ask that this council does not refer to the devolution bill as the Devo Scouse? It just absolutely looks appalling. It actually takes us back to the old days of Liverpool, you know, where we wanted to try and shake off that particular mantra. So can we look forward? And if we are going to look forward, can we take on what was good and what we talked about last week in the devolution bill? But it's a fantastic opportunity, and clearly our group will support you here tonight. But you also have to prove to the people of the world that at this final opportunity you have now to convince people you can be trusted that everything you do will be open and transparent. I'm not convinced about that before. The residents that I represent aren't convinced about that. So perhaps this is your one opportunity to ensure that that happens. But Mr Mayor, for those reasons alone, because it is aspirational, it is going to benefit local business, it is going to benefit our residents, clearly we will probably be supporting you tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that was a bit bizarre, really, Councillor Rennie. You just criticised uh, the leader for having what you perceive to be a political statement in his board, and you spent the rest of your speech making a highly political statement. So, and last time I checked, the Labour Party did not cause the global financial crisis. So maybe you need to revise that analysis as well. <laughs> I would really like to endorse this plan. I'm really proud of our vision and in particular the aspirations that we have for vulnerable people on the world. I'm just going to pick two, two or three examples and I won't go over the time, I promise. Sorry, I don't recall don't interrupting you when you made your speech. I expect the same courtesy back. Thank you. Um, I'm proud that we're focusing on ch children in poverty.
today around the globe, whether it be South Africa, whether it be India, whether it be in our own country. I I'm really proud that we're taking this stand in times where cuts have really affected this council and, and we've had to prioritise what money we have got. I'm really, really proud that we focused on victims of domestic abuse. And I just want to say I back this totally and I urge all members in this chamber to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. 
creative image as a council, not just within the Whittle, but throughout the rest of the UK. You mentioned Whittle to anybody from anywhere who knows anything about local governments, and the image we had as a council was very, very poor. Since then, I think it's fair to say we've made major progress, despite, and I know Councillor Rennie said that you keep politics, politics out of the council chamber, but it's got to be said, we've had many unfair and cruel attacks on people in the will and this council by central government. But despite that, we've made massive progress. And as we all know, Will Council was recently awarded uh, the most improved council. And I think regardless of which party uh, our allegiance is for, I think we should all welcome that. Because at the end of the day, the people who benefit from somebody like Will being recognised as the most improved council is not us in this council chamber, it's the residents of the Will who are now getting a better service. And that has been recognised by independent people. Now, I think we should all pay tribute, Mr Mayor, tonight to all the staff employed by the Council, all the officers employed by the Council, for all the work they've done to get us to the position that we're in tonight. They've all contributed so much to where we are now. But the plan before us tonight doesn't just say we've come a long way, isn't that great? The plan before us tonight tries to look ahead. I think Council already used the word aspirational. And I think the plan is aspirational, because we're looking ahead for the next five years and we're saying, yes, we've got problems, yes, we've got challenges, but there's so much positive work we can do to benefit all the people in the world. And I think that should be recognised and applauded by everybody. I've said many, many times that this council needs to work closely with all the partners to try and bring improvements for everybody in the world. I've also said that Will is a fantastic place to live, to work and visit. And I think that's true. This report tonight, I think, recognises that. And I would hope that when it comes to the vote, everybody in this chamber will recognise how far we've come, will recognise the value and the positive nature of the report before us and give it unanimous support. Because I think that is the only way that we're going to benefit all the residents of Will. Thank you, Mr Mayor.